Well, ladies and gentlemen, happy Martin Luther King Day. It is indeed a snowy time outside. You, you probably seen the short already that I posted not too long ago. It wasn't even like 30 minutes ago or anything like that, you know? Um, so, yeah, we got a lot of college basketball, got a lot of NBA, you know, just, just a lot of stuff to talk about today, uh, this morning. Um, before we get into the festivities of, you know, NBA games today, uh, a few college basketball games today, a few women's games today. So, but, but, and of course, the in the NFL playoffs continuing with a doubleheader today. Um, so yeah, let me let me start with the NBA because, um, yeah, it's it's probably one of the you know, more intriguing things to talk about right now because most teams have played either like in between 37 to 41 games. So some teams are about halfway there. Some teams aren't, you know, halfway through the season yet. And, you know, right now looking at everything, you look at the standings and everything like that, you still see teams like the Hornets, the Wizards, the Pistons, the Spurs. They're all bad. They're all still teams that, have not reached double ditch wins yet. Um, I know when Bignana has been playing well, I know, I know, I know. Um, there's been some trades and stuff like that, like OG, another B, you know, has been traded, you know, to the Knicks. And RJ Barrett is in Toronto now. So, you know, there's just that. Um, Joel Embiid's been out lately. So the 76ers have kind of faltered a little bit, you know. Uh, but they're still sitting third in the East. Uh, it's been some crazy, crazy winners, some crazy, crazy game winners. We're talking stuff like Nikola Jokic, you know, putting up a an absolute bomb, you know, from 39 feet out, you know, like, or Damian Lillard last night, you know, in the Kings-Bucks game, you know, last night. Insane stuff right there, man. Crazy, crazy game winners. John Morant, his season is done. Uh, guys like Draymond, Kyrie, Bradley Beal are all coming back. Draymond, you know, of course, the indefinite suspension happened, you know, like a month ago or so. Bradley Beal's been hurt all year, basically, but he's finally back in the lineup for the Suns, and it's finally, you know, helping the Suns out a little bit. Kyrie Irving, you know, has been, you know, banged up pretty much all season long, but he's back in the lineup. And the the trade-off with that is that Luka's been, you know, out for like a couple games now. Uh so yeah, uh interesting times ahead. You know, you know, there's teams like the Warriors and the Lakers that really are struggling right now. Like I cannot fathom why these two teams are struggling, but you know, there's going to be a lot of games involving them, you know, on national TV in the near future that, you know, I don't really want to see because, again, the Lakers are just inconsistent and the Warriors are, honestly, they're, honestly, they're past their prime at this point, but, you know, it is what it is, you know. So, yeah, teams like the Clippers are doing well, teams like the Thunder with SGA, of course they're doing well. Um you know, it's going to be one hell of a one hell of a time, you know, as we get, you know, past the NFL, you know, dominating pretty much all the storylines and more towards the NBA finally, you know, ramping up, which it should in a couple of weeks with a big triple header on ABC. Um uh, yeah, there's also the Tyrese Halliburton situation, but I know Bruce Brown has been stepping up surprisingly for the Pacers. So, you know, the Pacers are still in it. So yeah, there's a lot of things interesting going on, you know, with the NBA. It's not it's not terrible. But nothing's perfect. Nothing's perfect in the NBA right now. You know, it is what it is. Um for the women's game, let's 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 stick you know, with some good basketball, you know, the women's game, I did, I have been watching a few games lately. Um, Saturday night was a prime example. You know, you have Gus Johnson, the Fox production team, just slobbering, just, I mean, they are 
I mean, they are just going cuckoo, cuckoo for Caitlin Clark. And they, I mean, I mean, definitely the real deal. Don't sleep on her teammates, though. Them girls can play. The Iowa Hawkeyes can play some damn good basketball, and they showed that against Indiana on Saturday night in frigid conditions. Um, you know, UConn is peaking at the right time as well. I think, you know, they've gotten, you know, a few good wins lately and everything like that. So um, it's going to be interesting to see this, the game, there's that game against South Carolina, who's still undefeated, by the way, and they are the only undefeated team in the women's game, actually, right now. Um, it's kind of crazy, but it is what it is. Like LSU lost to Auburn, you know, yesterday. There's been there's been some, there's been some upsets. It's not it's not as crazy, you know, as the men's game, which we'll talk about in a moment. But you know, there have been some upsets in the women's game. Like Florida State, you know, had a quietly good week. You know, they beat Virginia Tech, you know, and everything like that, and they beat somebody else. I forgot who. Um, as far as the Pac-12 is concerned, definitely the best conference in the women's game right now. It's a shame that the Pac-12 is going to die after this year because you have Utah, you have Colorado, you know, top four, going to be top two probably, you know, top three Colorado. You have UCLA, USC, Stanford still, of course. You know, Pac-12 is looking damn, damn good. Just, mm. I mean, it's a shame, again, that almost all those games are stuck on the Pac-12 network. It's really a shame. You know, can you find the Pac-12 network? Probably not. So, yeah. It, it It's an interesting time, to say the least, as far as things go. Um, the new poll should be out in a little bit. It's about 10 o'clock central where I'm at. You know, so they should be out in like an hour or two. Uh, or maybe they're out like now, probably, but who knows. So, yeah, the women's game, definitely very intriguing, you know, to keep talking about. There's lots of games on national television, like over-the-air networks, like, you know, networks, you know, the, the networks you can actually see, you know, like NBC. Um, there's going to be going to be one hell of a day for NBC, you know, um, on Sunday, I mean, you get Caitlin Clark and Iowa going up against a state. pretty good Ohio State team, and then you have an NFL divisional playoff game right after that. Like, mm, that's how you do it right there. As far as the men's game goes, nobody is safe. Nobody is safe. We have upsets galore, upsets everywhere, every which way under the sun, and it's it's crazy to me. You know how how it is. You know you look at what. Why don't we start with the Americans? Right now, it's Memphis's world. Florida Atlantic. You know they've lost a couple of games that they shouldn't have lost, especially one in conference play. Yeah, they're looking kind of fraudulent right now. You know, I think you know. I think this team is really good, but you know you can't have bad losses. And we all know this, so. You know, there's gonna be there's gonna be a lot of leeway there. Um, a team like North Carolina quietly just you know just doing their thing. A team like UConn quietly doing their thing. Yeah, UConn's had an injury, you know, and everything like that. But UNC with Baco, RJ Davis, just quietly doing their thing. Duke is right behind them. Wake Forest too. Do not forget about Wake Forest in the ACC again. The Big Twelve. Absolutely insane. You know, did you expect Houston to be humbled like that? Two straight losses. Did you expect them to be humbled like that? When you know that, you know, Oklahoma State is apparently 0-3 in the Big 12, you know something's wrong that West Virginia has a win. Of course, my Longhorns, you know, are 1-2 in the Big 12. Um, so Texas Tech, Baylor, of course, Kansas, led by Hunter Dickinson, TCU, who really should be 3-0, and and I know people are going to complain. Well, yeah, 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 the, 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 the refs cheated, and, you know, they're, they're probably right on that, but, again, a loss is a loss, unfortunately, 
for the Horn Frogs, you know. Um, so yeah, this this conference yet again, the Big Twelve is yet again the best conference in the men's game, at least. You know, when you have a team like you know Oklahoma who was just you know just doing pretty pretty good in a non conference, so good in fact they went undefeated. Now they've lost two straight. Yeah. You have teams like BYU and Cincinnati just fighting each other. You know, I mean, it's just, it's just crazy. It's crazy. UCF upsetting Kansas. You know, it's a crazy, crazy conference. I don't think anybody's going to come out of this and escape. You know, everybody is going to have a loss in Big 12 play at least. At least two. I, I can see everybody at least losing two games. Again, Big East right now, it's UConn's world and nobody else's. I'd say watch out for Seton Hall, maybe Villanova, Creighton, St. John's, Marquette. They're all doing pretty solid. Uh, been watching a lot of St. John's, you know, Joel Soriano, um, Creighton, you know, of course, Kalkbrenner and everything, everything like that. Creighton's won four straight. Marquette, you know, Shaka's crew still, you know, kicking at like 11. You know, they're ranked number 11. The AP poll is just out of whack because it's terrible this year because of all the upsets. You know, teams like Wisconsin, you know, are leading the Big Ten. And Purdue, you know, has, you know, you have teams like Purdue, Indiana, Illinois. You know, they're not in position to be in position. And really, the Big Ten should not have as many bids this year. Um because it's going to shake itself out because, you know, a lot of teams in the Big Ten right now have, like, two losses. So it's going to shake itself out as far as the Big Ten is concerned. Um, Mountain West, probably probably the most fun conference to look at so far. You know, you know, San Diego State has been really good. You know, they should have been right, like, a couple weeks ago. They finally got right, but then they got absolutely smacked by New Mexico on Saturday, you know. So there, there's a lot, you know, going on. Like Utah State is 16-1. and one. They've won 15 straight games, which is crazy. You know, and Boise State, you know, is right behind them in the Mountain West right now. Again, Pac-12, kind of surprising that Arizona, you know, is, you know, 3-2 and two in conference play, and Oregon is 5-0. Oh. But you have teams like USC, UCLA, just, just awful. Just honestly, they're awful teams. Should be anywhere near the top. But, you know, with a team like Stanford upsetting Arizona, you know, and it wasn't even close, you know, again, nobody is safe in college basketball this year. It's a weird time, you know. An Oregon team that is one six straight is at the top of the Pac 12. And then, of course, the SEC. You know, Alabama's recovered. Auburn's looking pretty good. Kentucky is still Kentucky. Tennessee, you know, top five Tennessee, apparently, for some reason, even though they got beat by Mississippi State and everything like that. Um, South Carolina's looking pretty good. You know, kind of surprising to say that Georgia's looking pretty good, you know. So, yeah. And then, you know, of course, we had to talk about Gonzaga, who is, you know, not the same Gonzaga team that could have won a championship the last four or five years. This is not the same Gonzaga team. Just uh, an undisciplined team, a team that can't win the big games, you know, and they're going to fall out the top 25 for the first time in quite some time when the polls come out later today. Um, you know, so, like, the, the West Coast Conference is in a good position, actually, you know, with you know, with St. Mary's, San Francisco, and everything like that leading the way. But, you know, Gonzaga, at this point, they don't have a resume. They're not going to, you know, just waltz in and win the WCC, you know, easily like they do every year in the conference tournament and everything like that, at least. But, yeah, for Gonzaga, I think at this point, unless they beat Kentucky, then yeah, they have to win the West Coast Conference tournament. That that's basically it, you know, for them. As far as this week goes, um, it's a little bit you know crazy because of you know, you know, the NFL playoffs are still going on and everything like that. So, you know, again, because of the way upsets have been, you know, 
don't look at the top 25 as like an indicator of really anything. <laughs> yeah. There are games aplenty that are interesting <laughs> in college basketball for the men's side. So don't just look at the rankings and be like, hmm, I don't see any top 25 matchups here. There, there's something interesting there. There's always something interesting. Uh, yeah, so keep your eyes out for basically any game that's on, you know, Saturday. Um, and throughout the week, especially today, Villanova, Marquette, you know, today, before the NFL games and everything like that, which is going to be very spicy, very spicy stuff. So, yeah, these conference races are getting tight. We're getting in the heat of it. We are getting in the heat of it, y'all. And I cannot wait to talk to y'all again during the All-Star break, at least for the NBA anyway, to just kind of, you know, get through and just be like, wow, you know, where we are now, you know. And at that point, I think NBA teams will have like, uh, like 50, 50, 60 games under their belt somewhere around that range and, and then for the college game it'll be like you know like most teams have like 25 27 games under their belt at that point so we'll have a more clearer picture of resumes and stuff like that then again teams like florida atlantic texas you know gonzaga there's still time for them to build their resumes there's still time we still have a whole way to get to march so until then, everybody, um, I'll see y'all later on on Saturday, Saturday morning or Saturday afternoon, probably Saturday morning, to talk some lacrosse because got we got we got to get that in, you know, scrimmages and stuff. And I got to talk about the Albany Firewolves again because they're still undefeated, which is crazy.